Hey everybody, it's uh, Mr. Spearing back with installment number two in the lecture series for virtual learning during the 2020 school year. Uh, I come at you today with a lecture about a Supreme Court case, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson. Uh, it's a pivotal case. I know we'll have read it in class in a primary source annotation. So this is the lecture in order to give you some background and some more understanding. Uh, just an idea with our notes guys today. It's pretty easy. Uh, the last thing you have to do is political cartoons. Uh, so there's no other worksheet other than that. So do the whole thing. Do your two four squares. Do your three note sheets. And then lastly, do the political cartoons. Again, you see where you need to type is in highlighted answers. Uh, the one thing I will say is I'm getting a lot of people turning in work that isn't done. So don't just click turn in. Don't do one. There is eight sheets here, guys. You have to do all eight slides in order to turn it in. Um, and the nice part about the worksheets is uh, you'll be able to do them when you're done. We're kind of looking at political cartoons. What we're asking is, what do the pictures in this represent? Why do these symbols get used? And what's the intended meaning of this cartoon? So what is he saying about separate but equal after this cartoon? Uh, same thing here. When you look at the Supreme Court case, what are they saying uh, about separate but equal? So uh, without further ado, let's get to the lecture. Again, these slides are available on my website. If you want to follow along, please do. So it's going to say in the title slide, um, what this is going to do is the Supreme Court allowing for segregation. So this is going to be the approval by the Supreme Court to say segregation is going to be okay. Uh, just an idea of why court systems act the way they do. There's two levels of court systems. The state, which is uh, most likely what you're familiar with, and the federal. State courts control local issues. If you get a speeding ticket, you go to a state court. Uh, if you have a custody hearing, you go to a state court. If you sue your neighbor, you go to a state court. Uh, they interpret local issues. Uh, Wisconsin itself has its own Supreme Court, and so if there's issues at a local level that they think uh, don't coincide with the Wisconsin State Supreme Court, that stays inside of Wisconsin. So Wisconsin only has its own set of courts. There's a second set of courts that's a federal court. Uh, this is where appeals come from. If you think that you have not been given your rights by the Constitution within your state, you then appeal to a federal court. Uh, it also dis uh, they also deal with issues between states and crimes committed between states. So if I commit a crime in both Wisconsin, Illinois, Minnesota, and Iowa, I would go to a federal court instead of those four states arguing over me. But what we're talking about here is a guy named Homer Plessy's going to use the federal courts because he believes the state laws aren't providing him his rights that are guaranteed in the Constitution. Uh, and Because within the Constitution, the Supremacy Clause says that the, the Constitution usurps or rules over all. We need to use the federal courts to figure out if the, the Louisiana laws actually break the Constitution. Uh, some more facts. Most state, county, and local judges are elected, which means that if you don't like what's going on in Milwaukee County, you can vote your judge out. Uh, most federal judges are appointed, which means they're given their position by the president and the Senate uh, in their lifetime appointments. So if you don't like the ruling, you cannot get rid of them. It's really hard. Uh, you can impeach them for extreme misconduct, but you can't just go like, well, that, that decision was terrible. I want to get rid of them. Um, the concept of the reason this lifetime appointment exists is we don't want our judges swayed by current popular opinion or current trends. So we don't want someone who believes in something for a year to make sweeping changes to our Constitution. They're going to be hard to undo. We want people that are unafraid to make strong and solid choices so that there isn't a consequence. I mean, imagine every time a Supreme Court case was heard, they're worried about being reelected. Uh, they're more than likely going to appeal to the majority as opposed to appeal to the Constitution. Uh, sometimes the, the tyranny of the majority is too strong, so we need a strong court system that stands up to that tyranny. So, lifetime appointments have merit, but in the case of segregation, they do not. Uh, the post-Reconstruction Supreme Court, they were interpreting the laws after the Civil War. So now that slavery is over and we're putting all these new segregation, or attempting to put segregation laws in, it's the Supreme Court's job to interpret them. So in order to change or have turnover from the previous pre-Civil War Supreme Court, we would have to replace all nine justices. Uh, that's hard. 
especially we consider most of the justices prior would be uh, not only racist but you know from the south so we have some slavery lovers within it um some of these guys came from abolitionist homes and were freedom fighters but most of them came from places that accepted slavery uh, and saw i mean if you existed prior to 1860 you believe that slavery existed in the constitution so there's a lot of minds that need to be changed in order to make this work you can see a picture here of that supreme court it's a nine old white guys uh, you can kind of imagine how this is going to go from here on out. Okay, due to the slow turnover, the opinions don't change quickly. So even though we have a war and we have these amendments and the country has changed its opinion uh, as a majority, the Supreme Court did not. So we have to wait for turnover. It's going to take time in order to get people in there. Uh, if I go back for a second, just look at the age. They're old, which means that people who are young and, and learning about anti-slavery and abolitionists and people that are going to make the changes they're probably 20 to 30 years away from serving on this court at the time of these decisions so that's going to lead us to what's called the or i like to think of as the worst decision in supreme court history which is plessy versus ferguson uh, the background is this the louisiana rail cars were segregated by a law called the separate car act it provided both white and black rail cars. The black rail cars were called star cars because they had a big black star on the outside uh, to designate uh, that it was. On top of that, the separate car act maintained that the conductors of the trains themselves had to separate the cars. So if the conductor felt you were black, he could ask you to go to the black car. If he refused, it was punishable. So Homer Plessy, a man who was one-eighth black, got onto the white car. The conductor then asks him to move because he is considered a non-white. Uh, he refuses, and he's arrested for being on the wrong car. He is then fined $25 or given the option to serve 20 days in jail. Uh, he serves, I think it's one to two days in jail, and then he's released on a bond later. Um, luckily for him, it was a setup. The goal of Homer Plessy being um, arrested was that they would then would be able to take this court or take this case up the court chain to the Supreme Court. Um, there's a lawyer group uh, run by a lawyer named Touche. He uh, Touche? Uh, I can't remember how to say it. T O U C H Y. Um, he is going to set up Homer Plessy to, to do this, and he kind of has his arguments ready, so he is going to fast track this to the Supreme Court. Um, he had fair skin. He didn't necessarily look black. He was only one eighth black, so they believe that this guy had the most uh, chance to sit in front of the Supreme Court and be taken seriously. Uh, they believed not only it violated the 14th, but the 13th, that Homer Plessy's civil rights were being violated because he was not allowed on the same train cars as whites. Um, so that's the setup. They kind of have this thing going that this segregation is illegal due to the Constitution. The 14th Amendment says you can't violate my rights. And they're going to push it all the way to the Supreme Court. Right? This is here, the 14th Amendment. No, uh, no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property. Uh, and they weren't depriving Homer Pressey of life. And they weren't taking his property, but his freedom to choose, his liberty, uh, was being taken away. And he had, new, he had no due process. There was nothing Homer Plessy could do to get himself on the other car. He was simply removed due to state law. They lose. It's actually 7 to 1. Let's fix this slide in the presentation. Uh, because one of them abstains. He does not have a decision. Basically only one guy argues against it. The ramifications of this case. The Supreme Court states that separate but equal is legal. So I can segregate as long as I provide something for both races. So I can have a colored waiting room, I can have a white waiting room. They can be separate. There's nothing to say that that is illegal anymore. That does not violate the Constitution according to this case. Um, so the Louisiana case was thrown out because the separate cars that provided provided a black car and a white car, therefore providing the same opportunities for both. Um, the big key is uh, the majority opinion said that the law's job was not to remove people's prejudices. The law itself could not be used to make people believe people were equal. 
So if local customs and local people wanted to separate races, that was going to be acceptable as long as equal services are provided to both. So if you lived in the South and your white family hated black people, you could go and separate facilities. You could have a black restaurant and a white restaurant. And because that's the custom of your neighborhood, that would then be allowed. Um, the second argument they made is that the rail car is not a government service. That private businesses are going to be allowed to segregate because they're private and the government doesn't have any jurisdiction over that railway. So if the Louisiana cars wanted to segregate, they could. Um, because, again, it wasn't the government doing it. It was the, the train cars themselves. So we have kind of two reasonings. One, because people were racist, they should be allowed to be racist. Um, and it wasn't the court's job or the legislator's job to stop people from being racist. And then two, the fact that private businesses themselves could segregate because they're private and therefore they couldn't have any government interference. So hopefully you've read through it uh, to get an idea of this segregation and what's allowed. Uh, it's kind of really important to understand what this Plessy versus Ferguson says as we talk about the next 60 years of history until the 1950s. Have any questions? Let me know.